There have been more than 200 so far this year in New Orleans. Money side to side. Uptown, 13th Ward, Valence and Magnolia would raise one of the realest artists to come out of the city of New Orleans. They pulled us over. Uh, they found three guns in the car. They found right. three guns in the car. And um, as of right now, none of mine. The murder capital is the murder capital, man. They dropping like flies. You know, I'm 16, 17, 18. You know what I'm saying? I'm riding around in the bins. You know, I'm blinging. You know what I'm saying? I got stacks in my pocket. Look, everybody know what's happening with me, man. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the game for over 14 years. And the same way I came in the game, that's the same way I'm going now. Tell Ben that I want my money. BG, a.k.a. B. Jizzle, a.k.a. Jizzle, a.k.a. Doogie, was born Christopher Darcy on September 3rd, 1980. Doogie would lose his pops to gun violence at a young age. Jizzle's pop would be gunned down during an apparent failed robbery. Before the untimely death of his father, BG would be a young deacon at his grandfather's church. Losing his father at the age of 12 would be traumatizing to the young Christopher. Per Miss Sin, BG's mother, this is when Jizzle's life would take a turn. BG would cut class and begin to hang out with the street dudes in the hood. This is when BG would develop a love for heroin. BG would be 12 years of age when he would spit for Brian, Baby Williams, in front of Stan, the barber. Per Doogie, Baby would brainwash him and groom him at a young age. If nigga love me, if you love me like you say you love me, you know what I'm saying, then you wouldn't want to see me, you know what I'm saying, destroy myself like that. So evidently, you know what I'm saying, you wanted me in that position. Cash Money Records would have a strong local roster that would bring in cash by the boatload. In 95, the label would begin to lose artists. Bill Yah would be admitted to DePaul Mental Hospital. Tech Nine would catch a Jose. Pimp Daddy and Yellow Boy would both be murdered. Before Terrence Gangster Williams would catch a life sentence, Doogie would run with Gangster in the Noya and even mention Gangster in several of his songs. It is alleged that Gangster gave Jizzle the name Baby Gangster. The loss of artists would leave the weight of the label on Doogie and Manny Fresh. An unfortunate turn of events will lead to BG catching his first gun charge at the age of 16 for a weapon that wasn't his. It is alleged that Cash Money will get the Universal Records contract due to the consistency of the BG albums. In 97, Cash Money skyrocketed into the mainstream. Feeling like he wasn't getting his fair share of the pie, BG would leave Cash Money Records in 2000-2001 and start his own label, Chopper City Records which was distributed through Koch Records. In 2003, Doogie would launch his own rap group that consisted of Snipe, Gar, and Hot Kizzle. The group would be the Chopper City Boys, who would later add VL Mike in 2004. VL Mike would grow frustrated with internal issues inside the label concerning money. This would be the start of the beef with Jizzle. BG and Mike were from the same street circle, so this would get interesting. You wanna keep it on wax, keep it on wax, dog. But if I see you, depend on how I'm feeling that fucking day, you hear me? Cause I don't fall up in, bitch, like I told you. Mike, who had blood ties to the Hankins, would still show love to Miss Sin and Miss Carol while dropping diss tracks on Doogie and talking grimy about him in the streets. VL Mike would later be murdered in 2008. The internet will be filled with rumors implying that Doogie had something to do with Mike's murder. VL Mike's brother would take to the internet to dead those rumors. Out the internet, B. BG yeah. had something to do with VL Mike, you know, because of that distance shit, but on oh, some real hood shit, you know what I'm saying? You know, and I ain't never really spoke on it live or nothing to nobody. He ain't had shit to do, you know what I'm saying? That's my nigga. Even though, you know, that's my brother, you know, Bill. God bless the dead, you know. And shit, nigga was tripping, you know, some little shit, whatever they little different was. I really don't know. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I was gone. So when I came home, I just fell into all the shit in. Me and Doge still really ain't talk. You know what I'm saying? To this day. Unable to seal an arrest warrant for BG, the NOPD will start an all out harassment campaign against Jizzle. In 2009, BG will be pulled over for an alleged routine traffic stop. The NOPD will recover three weapons, two of which they say were stolen 
from the hot Chevy Tahoe, which allegedly was a stolen rental car. Hoogie would be arrested along with Damone Pollard and Gerard Fetty Federson. NOPD would put the gun charges on Jizzle and Fetty and the drug charges they would put on Damone, who was only 17 at the time. Fetty would later take to the stand as a witness in a Teddy Hankton trial where he would implicate BG in street crimes. After BG's arrest, witness tampering charges will be brought up on Jizzle. The government calls Gerard Fetterson. Are you cooperating today in hopes of getting a reduced sentence off of that 240 month sentence? Yes, ma'am. Now, if I can take you back a little bit to the 13th Ward, who are some of the individuals that you knew from growing up in the 13th? Me, Aaron Smith, Brian Hayes, Walter Porter, Terrence Lodrick, Christopher Dorsey. And who were some of the people that you were closest to? Me, Aaron Smith, Christopher Dorsey, Brian Hayes, Walter Porter. And did you have a nickname on the street? Yes, ma'am, Fetty. The prosecutor would be outraged that Jizzle would not cooperate with the government, attempting to give him 30 years. The judge would slam down the gavel and say, 30 years is ludicrous for this charge. Jizzle would end up with a 14 year sentence. It is rumored that prosecutors wanted Jizzle to turn over on the Telly Hankton organization. Jizzle stood tall in the paint and didn't say, not one word. And a New Orleans rapper has been sentenced to 14 years in prison for illegal possession of firearms and obstructing justice. Christopher Dorsey, also known as BG, was also sentenced to three years of supervised release by a federal judge. The 28-year-old pleaded guilty in December to being a felon with a firearm after being caught by the NOPD. Jizzle walked that 14-year Joe's down like a big dog is supposed to. Stood tall in the paint, and he'd be home in a minute. Jizzle is short, like real short. You might see that boy home sometime this year, maybe in June, something like that. It is alleged that he would be resigning with Baby and Cash Money Records upon his release. There's a few videos on YouTube of Baby and Hot going and visit that boy. But after 13 years, one visit, I don't know if I'm rocking like that. New Orleans, Louisiana, known for its strong hurricanes and not just the drink. The Inu underwent two of the most devastating hurricanes in Louisiana history. Betsy, September 9th, 1965, Category 4 storm with winds reaching 140 miles per hour. Katrina, August 29th, 2005, Category 3 storm with winds reaching 125 miles per hour, causing over $108 billion in damage, displacing residents. New Orleans will bounce back. So would its mean grimy streets michael allen aka vl mike born january 19th 1976 son of yvette and michael ray allen senior came up in a upt uptown new orleans initially living in the 17th ward as a young child he would later relocate to the 13th mike who didn't drink or smoke was a live wire who would crash out at the drop of a dime known for being a street dude mike would slide through from hood to hood although from the streets mike had a talent that talent was rapping. Mike would spit gritty garment lyrics from the streets. It is these lyrics that will grab the attention of Christopher Dorsey, AKA B. Jizzle. In 2003, BG was signed an independent deal for Chopper City Records with Koch Records. It was then BG will form the Chopper City Boys. The group would consist of BG's younger brother, Hakizzle, Gar, and Snipe. VL Mike would join the group in early 2004. The Chopper City Boys had been featured on BG's solo albums as well as several mixtapes between 2003 and 2006. The Chopper City Boys released their debut album, We Got This, in 2007. The Chopper City Boys' first single, Make a Mad, would be produced by David Banner. Get 
debut album will go on to sell 36,000 units independently its first week. The Chopper City Boys and Chopper City Records would seem to be on their way. They will go on a national promotional tour to promote the album. This will be before the rise of social media. The Chopper City Boys were interviewed with several of the largest hip hop platforms in the industry, even having a freestyle session on the basement. You see me on Rap City, you heard via the truth. Before the deal will be signed, Chopper City Records in the label of James Tapp, aka Soldier Slim, Cut Throat Committee Records would have the streets on fire with mixtapes. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina will make landfall in New Orleans. BG will relocate the Chopper City Records imprint to Detroit, but later move the label back to Louisiana. BG's roster will complete their contracts with Koch in 2007. BG will partner with TI and sign a solo deal with Atlantic Records. Christopher Dorsey, aka BG, was finally starting to see some real bread. With the success of the label on the rise, BG was seen to be back. Jizzle had taken a group of dudes from the streets to be recognized nationwide. With this amount of success in such little time, you would think that everyone would be happy, right? In a perfect world, this answer would be yes. However, this would not be the case as Michael Allen, aka PL Mike, would not be happy at all. With Mike's dissatisfaction, he would launch a hate campaign against Jizzle. Rewind, the year is 2004. Michael Allen, 28 years old at the time, was an inspiring rapper from New Orleans. Mike would launch his career as a rapper under the stage name VL Mike. Mike would get the opportunity he was looking for when he was made a member of the Chopper City Boys, a group put together by Christopher Dorsey, aka BG. The Chopper City Boys would go on to release their debut album. Not happy with the money, Mike would take to the streets to disrespect BG. What started as just talking shit would turn into Mike's vlogging in the street of the N.O. This would not be a good look as Mike would go from hood to hood disrespecting Jizzle. It is rumored that the entire time Mike was putting off these antics, he was still being cordial with Miss Sin, BG's mother. BG would go on record saying that the disagreement between him and VL Mike was minor and would end peacefully. Mike would not feel the same way as he would go on to record a diss track on Jizzle and perform it at local shows, one of which BG would show up to. Jizzle, being a legend in the game and former member of the super group, the original Hot Boys, would not be affected by this hate campaign. Mike's barrage of insults would do nothing to hurt BG's career or street cred. Ultimately, Jizzle would let Mike out of his contract. It is rumored that Mike had several deals on the table, including affiliation with the game's Black Wall Street label. Upon Mike being released from his contract, rumor would circulate that this beef had been taken to the streets. It wouldn't be long before Mike's life would be taken. April 20th, 2008, Mike would be in the Gentilly area of the city. He would pull up to the 4700 block of Miles Drive at or about roughly 1 p.m. From out of nowhere, as Mike was getting out of his whip, shots would ring out. He would be approached and shot by an unidentified man. The man would flee the scene on feet. Michael would be taken to University Hospital, where he would later die. At this time, Michael's murder remains unsolved. It is unknown if Michael was targeted or his murder was random. No motive has ever been discovered. The year is 2009. Prior to relocating back to the N.O., BG had been arrested three different times on gun charges in Detroit. To the naked eye, this arrest was seen to be random cases where BG was just caught slipping with a blicky. Unbeknownst to Jizzle, he was being investigated by the feds. BG would later find out that he was under investigation in several different states that he frequented. In November of 09, Jizzle would relocate back to the city. His two hood to be Hollywood album release party was slated to take place at the Chocolate Bar Friday night on November 6th. On the night of November 3rd, BG would be arrested along with Demond Pollard, aka Moni, and Gerard Fettison, aka Fetty, on felony weapons charges. BG's team would spend the entire week trying to bond him out. It is alleged that no one knew that BG had been arrested. This would be pretty much impossible as the arrest made the national and local news. If you want to state the claim that no one knew if he had bonded out, that would be safe to say. BG would ultimately end up bonding out the night of the party with enough time to attend, being that the chocolate bar is directly across the street 
from the jailhouse. Christopher Dorsey, a.k.a. BG, resides from the 13th Ward, New Orleans. BG would lose his father to gun violence at an early age. This would turn the young Christopher to the streets. Christopher had a gift. That gift was wordplay. The hood Barbara Stan would introduce Christopher to Brian Williams, a.k.a. Baby, an inspiring independent record label owner at the time. That label would be Cash Money Records. Christopher, who would be a young kid at the time, would go on to be featured on UNLV's album. He would later collaborate with Dwayne Carter, who we now know today as Lil Wayne, on the album The Bee Gees. Ultimately, putting out a string of classic solo albums on the label, Bee Gees would drop Chopper City. It's All On You, Volume 1. It's All On You, Volume 2. Chopper City in the Ghetto and Checkmate. BG would also be a member of the supergroup The Hot Boys, which released Get It How You Live, Guerrilla Welfare, and Let Them Burn, all under the Cash Money imprint. Somewhere between 2001 and 2002, BG would leave Cash Money Records and develop his own imprint, Chopper City Records. BG would struggle with addiction throughout his entire career, being arrested multiple times building a fairly large felony jacket. BG would have it falling out with VL Mike, one of the artists on his label. Mike would drop several diss songs aimed at BG, even going far enough as to vlog in the streets of the NO. It wouldn't be long before VL Mike would meet his untimely demise. BG would go on to release Living Legend, Life After Cash Money, The Heart of the Streets Volume 1, the Heart of the Street, Volume 2, I Am What I Am, and Too Hood to Be Hollywood, all under his own imprint via Koch Records. Before the death of James Tapp, a.k.a. Soldier Slim, the two will release a classic mixtape for the streets. The year is 2009. BG had been arrested several times. BG was arrested by the NOPD in June and booked on drug charges. That summer, BG would be briefly held on an outstanding warrant from Texas. That case will be dropped a month later. BG was also arrested in March on drug charges in Jefferson Parish. Prosecutors would dismiss the case in August. BG would have a total of three felony drug charges between the years 2008 and 2009. The night of November 3rd, 2009, BG along with Damone Pollard, a.k.a. Moni, Gerard Fettison, a.k.a. Fetty, and Walter Porter, a.k.a. Mooney, were all chilling at the D-Shop in New Orleans East. BG, Mooney, and Moni were all strapped at the time. Unaware of their surroundings, Fetty would be the only one to spot the dicks staring at them from outside. Mooney would gather all of the tools, hop the gate behind the D-Shop into the gas station parking lot. The plan was to pick Mooney up at the gas station and mash out. Walking out of the D-Shop, BG, Moni, and Fetty would notice that the parking lot was swarming with them dicks. Not wanting Mooney to get caught, the three men would hop in the Chevy Tahoe and mash out. Mooney, who had been left at the gas station, would get away. Too concerned with the guns that they had on them, the men would totally forget about the tools that were in the truck. Fetty would hop on I-10, head for Uptown. Before they would get far, they would be pulled over by the NOPD. The guns would be found and they would all be arrested. 
The NOPD would find three guns along with loaded extendos. Two of the guns came back as stolen. The Tahoe had been stolen from Alamo Rental. With both Jizzle and Fetty having prior convictions, they were conspired to have Moni, who had no convictions at the time, take the charge. Moni was signed an affidavit claiming the guns belonged to him. Unbelongs to Moni, BG, and Fetty, Jizzle's jail phone conversation had been recorded. The feds would pick up the charges. Both Moni and Fetty would plead guilty, opening the door for charges to be put on BG. Moni would make a plea agreement for prosecutors and be sentenced to two and a half years in the feds. Fetty, who will cooperate with the feds, will receive a 20-year sentence. The feds would attempt to link BG to Telly Hankton and Walter Porter using his videos and rap lyrics. Third had already been convicted for one murder and was serving a life sentence. NOPD was labeling WOW as public enemy number one. Prosecutors were trying to slam Jizzle with 25 years. The feds would attempt to use BG's videos, I Ain't Telling, and Guilty by Association, in which Jizzle mentioned Mooney. Mooney even cameoed in the video. It is alleged that at the start of the I Ain't Telling video, BG and Hot will reenact reading the paperwork of Terrence Williams, aka Gangster, who had cooperated with the government. Although disgusted with BG's criminal past and current charges, the judge will not allow the videos to be used for giving BG more time. Judge Helen G. Berrigan was sentenced BG to serve 168 months, 14 years, in federal prison. BG pled guilty to two counts of being a felon in possession of a firearm and one count of participating in conspiracy to obstruct justice on December 7th of 2011 without the benefit of a plea agreement. The judge would also order BG to be placed on three years of supervised probation upon his release. According to the indictment, BG, who had three prior felony drug convictions from 1998 through 2003, was in possession of a firearm between August 2009 and November 2nd, 2009, and again on November 3rd, 2009, counts one and two. The indictment also charges BG with conspiring to obstruct justice with two other individuals, Gerard Fetterson, a.k.a. Fetty, and Demone Pollard, a.k.a. Moni. The indictment alleges that these three individuals conspired with each other to obstruct justice by getting Moni to sign a false affidavit saying that neither Fetty nor BG possessed the three firearms on November 3rd, 2009. BG will file for and be rejected compassionate release three times. The court cited misconduct as the reason for the decision. In July of 2022, Birdman will pen a letter to the judge remarking on BG's possibilities to impact society if released early. The letter reads like this, BG is not only a generational artist, but he's got a platform and a chance to share his experience to better today's young men who need to hear what he has to say. When he is released, I know he will get back and use what he's gone through to help as many people as possible. Rumors will circulate of BG's release. There will be even a viral clip online of a dude that looks nothing like BG being released from prison. Social media onlookers would assume that it was Jizzle. Brian Williams, a.k.a. Bearman, would later visit BG in prison. The anticipation of BG's release would build as Baby would post multiple cryptic captions to his social media platform implying that BG would be home soon. BG's scheduled release date is 2024. It is rumored that BG will be home by July of this year. 2023. Federal court today, Christopher Dorsey, better known as local rapper BG, pled guilty today to gun charges. Dorsey admitted that on two occasions, including on this YouTube video, he possessed guns, despite being a three-time convicted felon. He also pled guilty to obstruction of justice for trying to get an associate to claim ownership of the guns. Dorsey will remain behind bars until his sentencing in March. New Orleans rapper has been sentenced to 14 years in prison for illegal possession of firearms and obstructing justice. Christopher Dorsey, also known as BG, was also sentenced to three years of supervised release by a federal judge. The 28-year-old pleaded guilty in December to being a felon with a firearm after being caught by the NOPD.